Robots, like humans, must perceive the world using complex sensors like video cameras or retinas and act in it using low-level actuators like motors or muscles. That is every robot's reality. Everything it ever does and everything it ever considers doing must eventually boil down to sensing and acting at that level of detail. However, humans don't reason that way. Imagine planning a trip from one city to another. Imagine all of the muscles you'll have to flex to make that happen. To walk, go up and down stairs, drive a car, enter and exit a bus, and all the terabytes of data that will pass through your retinas along the way. Trying to plan your trip at that level of detail would be ludicrously hard. Instead, you might consider several high-level alternatives. Taking the bus versus flying, driving using one highway versus another, stopping for lunch midway or not. This type of decision making uses concepts like Terminal A or the I-95 that abstract over what you might see and do. Those concepts aren't real in the way that images on your retinas are. They're convenient abstractions that you invent to ease decision making. Without them, planning even five minutes ahead would be overwhelming. If we're going to build robots as smart and as capable as humans, it will be necessary for them to reason abstractly in the same way. Some AI research has focused on constructing motor skills that enable decision making at a higher level than low level motor control. While these skills can substantially improve performance, they aren't sufficient on their own, because the robot must still choose which skill to execute based on low level sensor data. We take the complementary approach. Given a set of high level skills, can we construct the simplest abstraction over the robot's sensory motor space that still supports planning? By formally defining the plan space of the robot and reasoning about the computation required to determine the probability of executing any plan, we show that an appropriate abstract representation can be built out of symbols naming probability distributions over the robot's sensory motor space. Our theory identifies the necessary and sufficient grounded symbolic vocabulary for building a sound and complete abstract model. As a result, a robot can now use probabilistic machine learning methods to autonomously learn a symbolic model of a task and then use that model to plan efficiently. To test our framework, we tasked our robot, Anathema, with solving a mobile manipulation problem. Anna was placed in a room with a cupboard, a cooler, and a switch that turned a light inside the cupboard on or off. She was given skills to move to, open, and close the cupboard and the cooler. Opening and closing required the use of both of her grippers. She was also given skills for turning the switch to the left and to the right. Doing so was possible when she was stationed at the cupboard, and its door was closed. An open door blocked access to the switch. We placed a green bottle in either the cupboard or the cooler. Anna could pick up the bottle if she was standing in front of the relevant container and it was open. The only catch was that the light in the cupboard was so bright that it whited out the cupboard interior, blinding Anna and preventing her from picking up or putting down the bottle in the cupboard, even if the door was open. The description we've just given you is sufficient for an expert to write down a very compact abstract model of this task and its logical dependencies. But Anna didn't get that description. All she got was her sensor data, a high definition point cloud of what was in front of her, her location in the room, and the position of all of her joints. Her task was to learn the abstract model from scratch. To do so, Anna gathered data by executing her motor skills, as shown here. She executed a sequence of approximately 160 motor skills, recording both the sensory data observed before and after each skill execution, and which motor skills could be executed in each situation. This data was used as input to off-the-shelf probabilistic machine learning algorithms, and the resulting probability density estimators and probabilistic classifiers we used to first construct a symbolic vocabulary and then an abstract model using that vocabulary. Here's an example learned operator, which describes the conditions under which Anna can run the cupboard opening skill and what happens if she does. The operator says that symbols 1, 3, and 4 must be true to open the cupboard. Symbol 1 refers to a distribution over Anna's position in the map. 
Visualizing samples from that distribution indicates that she'd be standing in front of the cupboard. Symbol 3 refers to her joint positions. Recall that her left arm is raised when she's holding the bottle. Symbol 3 can therefore be interpreted as her not holding anything. Finally, symbol 4 is a distribution over the voxels that make up the cupboard. Sampling that distribution, we can see a lot of variation, including in the position of the switch, but the cupboard door is always closed. If the robot executes the operator, then symbol 4, that the door is closed, becomes false, and symbol 5, which we can see refers to the case that the door is open, becomes true. This operator therefore describes the knowledge that, in order to successfully open the cupboard door, Anna should be standing in front of it while not holding anything, and it should be currently closed. After she's done, the cupboard will no longer be closed, but be open instead. Note that the notions of open, closed, in front of the cupboard, and not holding anything, are not given to Anna, but are instead discovered autonomously by her, because there the abstractions are necessary for reasoning about opening the door. Here's a similar operator for opening the cooler. Symbols 0, 3, and 9 must be true, indicating that Anna is in front of the cooler, not holding anything, and that the cooler is closed. Here there are two possible outcomes, each labeled with a probability. Either symbol 9 becomes false, and symbol 8 becomes true, which means that the cooler opens, or, with a probability of about 8%, nothing changes. The latter case occurs because Anna has to push the cooler lid open, and sometimes it bounces back closed. Once Anna has learned a complete collection of these operators, the grounding distributions can be discarded for the purposes of planning, since the resulting abstract model, which is literally just a text file, is sufficient. To demonstrate this, we ask Anna to move the green bottle from the cooler, which is closed, to the cupboard, which is also closed. Note that the switch is on. As expected, Anna first opens the cooler to reveal the bottle, but then she realizes that she's going to have to open the cupboard and she can't do that with the bottle in her hand, she also realizes that she needs to turn off the switch to place the bottle in the cupboard, and that the cupboard can't be open if she wants to do that. So she first moves towards the cupboard, then turns the switch, then opens the cupboard, before finally coming back to pick up the bottle. Planning to solve that problem took only 4 milliseconds, using an off-the-shelf probabilistic planner. It was that easy because our new framework frees the robot from operating in the complexity of its own sensory motor space, revealing instead the true underlying simplicity of the task. Our results are aimed at bridging the gap between the complexity of operating with a real robot and the simplicity of most problems in the world. We believe that allowing our robots to plan and learn in the abstract, rather than the concrete, will be fundamental to building truly intelligent robots.